Hi, welcome everybody again. Hi, hi. I have some um, more persecution news and uh, it's going to cover um, some other religions as well as Islam. But this one is, um, right, basically this, Kenya. So it's been seven years since the mall attack and the headline of persecution.org, which is International Christian Concern, says that Al-Shabaab is still as strong. So seven years ago, masked gunmen attacked the Westgate Mall in Nairobi, Kenya. During the attack, the gunman, later known to be a part of Al-Shabaab, killed more than 70 people. This attack is one of the largest terrorist attacks on Kenyan soil in the past 100 years. And the other major attack, the Garissa University attack, were both conducted by the same terrorist group, which is Somali-based Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is a violent Islamic extremist organization, I read from persecution.org. They have been operating out of Somalia since they were part of the Islamic Courts Union previous to 2006. Then in 2012, they pledged allegiance to Al-Qaeda. Since that time, they have held large parts of the Somali countryside, including much of the rural land surrounding Mogadishu, the country's capital. They have been conducting many attacks on Kenyan soil each year since Kenya joined the African Union mission in Somalia, which is the acronym is AMISOM, a coalition of African forces trying to end Al-Shabaab's regime. These attacks often, but not always, target Christians and are very brutal. Hundreds of people have been killed by Al-Shabaab over the past decade in Kenya, many of them executed only because of their Christian faith. Al-Shabaab believes that if they kill enough Christians in Kenya, then the Kenyan government will stop supporting AMISOM. This has not proved true, however, so on that note, um, I'd like you to please pray for Al-Shabaab, firstly. I'd like you to pray that with whatever is causing them to persecute Muslims and Christians, because if they're anything like ISWAP um, and Boko Haram, they also kill Muslims because it's mainly tribal in Africa. So I'd like you to pray firstly for the persecutors, please. Um, they need to be filled with some spirit of love or like fight not against the flesh and then I would like you to pray please for the remaining Christians in Kenya and in Nigeria as well because I just referenced ISWAP and Boko Haram. So like I said earlier there will be videos this week about Hindu extremism and Christian persecution because that's my uh, topic. So I'm not claiming that all persecution of Christians comes from Islam, it surely doesn't because China is number one in the world for the persecution of Muslims and Christians, any theists at all. Um, they, because, because the idea of God and the idea of an ultimate truth and an objective truth is dangerous to godless, atheistic or communist uh, regimes because they know that if people are imbued with the truth, if they have the truth in their heart, then it doesn't matter if you persecute the body necessarily. Um, you know, you, it's very difficult to stamp out an idea unless you stamp out the mind which holds the idea. So please do pray for Christians everywhere, but focus your hearts especially on uh, Pakistan, Nigeria, Sudan, Ethiopia for sure. In July and August of this year, 500 Christians have been murdered in Ethiopia and 4,000 Ethiopian Christians have had to basically flee their places of residence and go into internally displaced persons camps, which can then be re-attacked. So it, it, like it's really desperate. But on a brighter note, uh, Romans 8.28 tells us that uh, all things work to the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I don't, I don't particularly know um, what that good will be, but I know that Jeremiah 29, 11 onwards says that God alone knows the plans uh, for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. So, so we, we will be hated, as Christ said, because the world didn't understand him. The darkness does not understand the light. But that doesn't mean... Um, that you need to retreat from your faith or um, denounce uh, your, your true beliefs because no man should have power over your soul. There's no point in saving your body and losing your soul um, and I think Muslims would agree and I think many other uh, theists would agree with that. So um, you don't have to give them money, just please try to publicise these cases because if, hi, if, um, if it were for the BBC and The Guardian and the Sky News and any mainstream twaddle monger, basically no one would really know about these things. And um, I'm not going to go on a rant about the MSM, but like wake up people and uh, yes, smell the slaughter as it were. And I'm going to stop now because I'm rambling. Right, welcome again everybody.
uh, persecution again. Um, and a pastor in West Papua has been murdered amid racial uh, regional tensions. So in Indonesia on September 19th, very recently, unknown assailants have shot and killed Pastor Jeremiah Zanambani at his farm in Intanjaya, Papua. Pastor Zanambani was known across Indonesia for his servant's heart, I read here, and translating the Bible into the Moni dialect. After the pastor was killed, the Indonesian military blamed a rebel armed separatist group known as the KKSB. However, the Indonesian Gospel Tabernacle Church, GK2, um, which is his congregation, disputed the military's report, claiming military officers killed him for no reason. Colonel IGN Suryastawa of the Indonesian military claimed that GK2's accusation was fake news, uh, which is a bit of a weird term, outside of Donald Trump, and intended to discredit the military authority only. West Papua has a long history of violence following Indonesia's annexation of the territory after Indonesia gained its independence from the Netherlands, you may or not, may not have known. Indonesia was prepared to invade West Papua by force until the United States and the UN proposed the 1969 Act of Free Choice, which legally integrated the two. So again, it's a case of a pastor being killed, as, as we are hopefully aware by now. Um, many, many pastors in Nigeria are killed, along with their wives, pregnant or not. You may remember um, the case that I, I, some months ago now that I spoke about. So whether or not it's to inflame uh, regional tensions or to try to quell them, maybe his dissenting voice and his, his heart of his servant's heart was troubling to a regime that is uh, mainly warring against the flesh and the flesh of its own people. Um, regardless of politics, he was a member of the body of Christ. We suffer his loss and um, surely uh, Indonesian Christians are suffering as the result of his absence. It doesn't mean to say it's not in God's plan for him, but what it does mean is that the body of Christ is uh, one less, so we are weakened. As we know, there are 2.2, I think, plus billion Christians on the planet, but they are being murdered, brothers and sisters, at the rate of hundreds per day solely for their profession of Christ. I think it's absolutely outrageous. Like, you couldn't make it up, and yet Christ predicted it. Um, to be hated is one thing. Um, to be put in prison for your faith is another thing. To be murdered in cold blood and children, women, you know, everybody included. There are no combatants. We fight not against the flesh, um, but against principalities and powers of darkness. And when those powers seek our destruction, it's because the truth makes them uncomfortable. The truth will not be altered. The truth cannot be dilated. It cannot become less true because of a superior narrative or some sort of political agenda. And the people in charge know this and therefore they seek to quell um, uprisings of Christians with, uh, you know, conversion rates and stuff like that. So please do pray for Indonesian Christians. It is illegal um, in Indonesia um, to, well, many religious acts for Christians are illegal. You can't question uh, certain questions. You can't publicly uh, worship things. I'm in touch with at least one Indonesian and it sounds pretty dreadful. So please do keep them in your prayers. It's the first time I've uh, spoken about Indonesia, but I, hopefully I won't have to again. But of course, there'll be more stories along, um, I'm pretty sure. Please also remember Ethiopia, where 500 Christians have been murdered in uh, July and August of this year, which puts them kind of ahead of Nigeria, not in numbers, but of um, rapidity and of the ratio being killed per month is certainly higher. Um, that's the ones that we know about, as was pointed out to me earlier. Also, 4,000 Ethiopian Christians have been displaced. And whether it's a land grab or whether it's, you know, it's irrelevant. These people are suffering. They are our brothers and sisters. Please pray for them. Please publicize these videos. Also, this information. If you've got uh, social media skills or a social media presence, please do, like, badger. Uh, you know, just go on about it, basically, because... As I've said previously, if you read the newspapers alone as a sole source of information other than the Bible and real life stories, you'd, you'd be completely unaware. You would potentially believe that another religion was very persecuted um, and Christians were just all swanning around happy as Larry. I don't know who Larry is and whether he's happy or not, but the point is please pray for them and uh, pray for us at the park that we are given the, the, the Holy Spirit to be able to speak the truth without fear 
um, and without shame or embarrassment, without too much opposition, to be fair, because the truth is the truth, and that is Jesus Christ, and he alone can save you, and I hope he already has, and if he hasn't, come chat to me in the comments, and uh, we'll try and fix you up. All right, God bless. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back again. More persecution. Please don't hate me for it. Someone's got to uh, put these stories out there and... You know, they, they, they need to be known and they need to be prayed for. Prayer is our very first and foremost uh, weapon and defense. So, and actually I'm gonna give a talk, um, just an audio about the weapon of prayer uh, very soon. I think I've already recorded it uh, sufficiently. So anyway, twin Christian girls have been kidnapped in Katsina, Nigeria. So according to Morningstar News, twin sisters Hassana and Hussaina Garba, daughters of a church elder, were kidnapped from their home in Katsina State on Friday, September 18th. During the abduction, their father, Ibrahim Garba, was also shot by the assailants. He survived the shooting but is in hospital receiving medical care. It must be absolutely heart-wrenching for him. This attack came just days after another pastor and three other Christians in a north-central state were killed earlier this month. Morning Star said that Charles Yahaya, a resident of the area, believes that this kidnapping is just one of many that have taken place in recent years. He believes that young Christian women are being targeted for kidnappings so they can be forced into Islam and sold as wives. So we see something very similar happening in Pakistan. Testimonies and exhibits at the crime scene show that the kidnappers were very organized, uh, it's reported, very informed on their target and heavily armed. This is one incident among many. It is the sustained and targeted kidnapping of Christian girls in northern Nigeria. Please do pray for them. After which they are forcefully converted to Islam and married off, thereby becoming sex slaves in effect. It's not marriage, it's uh, rape. So something is going on in our country, he says, that needs to be addressed systematically and collectively by all well-meaning citizens, not just Christians. Kidnapping for ransom and kidnapping for conversion have both become big business in Nigeria, we are told. Many young girls have been, take, have been taken by both criminal and terror groups such as Boko Haram, you may, like I talk about them pretty often. Um, these girls disappear and are sold into slavery as wives or are used in suicide bombings, how charming. Please, uh, please do pray for these two young girls, twin sisters, hopefully, hopefully they're at least together. Um, I don't know what other solace they're gonna find at this time apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Spirit. Um, giving them a sense of peace. Uh, I just, I wish it would stop. I wish I didn't, you know, feel the need or the uh, ability actually to do these talks and these videos because if there was no information, obviously I'd just be standing here waffling, which of course I still do as well. Um, pray for the, the mother of the children who isn't referenced in the article. Her husband has been shot. Her children have been stolen to be used as sex slaves as the article uh, so rightly says. Um, please do imagine, you know, any of you have 14 year old daughters or 14 year old nieces or 14 year old sisters or 14 year old daughters, children, grandchildren, um, Myra Shabazz in Pakistan, who was forcibly uh, at gunpoint, taken from the streets by three men, married to one of them. Um, subsequently, you know, he was taken to court. It's just ridiculous. She was ordered to a woman's shelter, then back to her abductor. Now she's fled. Um, and the police are now uh, saying they'll protect her. Whether or not they will, as we know, or hopefully some of you know, in Pakistan very recently, an American has been shot in court in front of a judge in a packed courtroom. Uh, he was up on blasphemy charges. His attacker was a young man, a young uh, Muslim man, and he walked into the court unarmed. So where did he find the gun? Also, when he was arrested, because it's an American citizen, so you would expect some um, swift justice, as it were, the uh, jailers and the police who arrested him were pictured smiling with their, you know, like giving the, basically giving their approval. Um, he's being treated as a national hero. So whereby uh, we in Europe and the United States of America and Australia uh, may not realise the extent that <laughs> pro-Islamic or anti-blasphemy um, laws, you know, the actual non, just the stuff they can bring up is outrageous. The European Court of Human Justice, as you may remember, upheld a uh, a blasphemy case against a woman who questioned uh, the noise, the decibel out, uh, output of a mosque. She was uh, convicted and penalised financially. Uh, I think she was Austrian, if I remember rightly. 
So we don't need any blasphemy laws. Christians don't need any blasphemy laws. The Bible says you can say what you like about Jesus and the Father, but you must not blaspheme the Spirit. There's no point in prosecuting people legally or civilly for blaspheming the Spirit because obviously God is the ultimate judge and um, like let's all stay out of it basically. So no to blasphemy laws, no to the restriction of uh, free speech, no to kidnapping young girls in Nigeria, if you don't mind, uh, Boko Haram, when you get a minute, if you check this video out. If uh, someone leaves the camera alone while we're just all sweating all over the place, um, giving me some sort of like nausea and seasickness. But amen, we're not prepared, <laughs> we're not professional. We're just trying to tell you about Nigeria, um, Katsina State, K Kaduna State. We're trying to tell you about Pakistan, Indonesia, China, Sudan, Niger, Chad, uh, North Korea, like Somalia, Ethiopia. Like it's just, just go on Open Doors, the top 50 countries for Christian persecution. I will, hi, I will also, I will also be doing, so. hopefully I'm going to look to do a, a video about Christians persecuting other Christians. Maybe slightly controversial, but I'm hoping it will be educational and I'm hoping the Holy Spirit can use that to soften some hearts that may have been hardened towards our brothers and sisters who are therefore not condemned because they are in the body of Christ. And I would uh, urge all of you to maybe look into different denominations with an eye to understanding rather than theologically attacking each other because my uh, frequent vision, and I'm not joking, is um, the kingdom of God, the, the walls, you know, buttressing the uh, encampment, as it were, the blood of the martyrs has like welded those stones together. And I see a certain religion, to be fair, around the walls of this encampment, um, kicking the doors off. And we Christians are arguing about Nicaea and it's just boring. It's already happened. Like, let's all get over it. We, we are brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not. I mean, obviously some South American Catholics, whatever, but just the ones who scream and sat and move the camera. All right, God bless you all and peace out. Hi, welcome again. Um, more Christian persecution. So it is reported that on the 26th of this month, very recently, according to the Union of Catholic Asian News, UCAN, hundreds of Christians in Dhaka, Bangladesh, participated in a demonstration calling for the repeal of Pakistan's blasphemy laws. The demonstration was organized by the Bangladesh Christian Association and was held in the Gulshan diplomatic area of Dhaka. Protesters handed a memorandum to Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan calling for Christians and other religious minorities in Pakistan to be protected okay, sorry, and for the country's blasphemy laws to be repealed. No religion endorses violence and killing in the name of religion, Nirmal Rosario, the BCA president, told the rally. But in Pakistan, Christians and other minorities have been facing inhuman abuses and oppression in the guise of a draconian blasphemy law. We demand an end to the oppression and safety of all minorities in Pakistan and immediate repeal of the blasphemy law. Two seconds. In Pakistan, false accusations of blasphemy, such as Azia Bibi, you may remember, are widespread and often motivated by personal vendetta or religious hatred. Accusations are highly inflammatory and have the potential to spark mob lynchings, uh, shootings in courtrooms, as you may remember very recently, vigilante murders and mass protests. So currently, 26 Christians are imprisoned on blasphemy charges in Pakistan. These 26 are defendants in 23 blasphemy cases represented at various levels and you may remember that I did a video uh, recently about a brother and a sister I believe one of them had learning difficulties who'd been accused of in text blaspheming in English uh, Mohammed and neither of them spoke English and both of them I, I think one of them was illiterate even so um, clearly spurious charges they carry the death penalty they also carry uh, like mob reprisals and you know even Azia Bibi's brothers brother-in-law's sorry throat was slashed after her acquittal so it matters not whether they're guilty or not please do pray for pakistan pray, pray for the christians there that uh, god would comfort them in their distress and that and pray also that you would have the strength of faith to be able to undergo such persecution and i'm going to just have a chat with pavlov and i'll get back to you soon god bless bye bye